Hello and welcome Hero Forge fans, Dr. Faust with you once again with another painting tutorial. This time we are painting a World War II Tommy Gun Toting Turtle Man. And if you need to ask why, well then you are not Hero Forging correctly. So yeah, I realized I could make a badass turtle on Hero Forge and I made one. And so we're going to paint him today. We're going to do this a little bit differently than normal since we're not going over any real technique in this video. This is mainly just going to be on my take on how to paint a turtle man. So I don't have a whole lot to add to what you're seeing on the screen. I'll just jump in here and there to add a little bit more explanation where I think it's necessary. But other than that, hopefully by this point, if you watched all the videos in the series, you should have an idea of what's going on. As you can see, we've been using a base of camo olive green and mixing in yellow ochre for the highlights. And now we switch to straight yellow ochre because we're going to lighten the jaw, basically the underbelly of our turtle man. So this is going to add a little bit more definition to our turtle, make him a bit more interesting. So he's not just a straight green color. Here we are using some military green and it's diluted with some glaze medium and we're just adding some spots to the back of the head and the back of the leg. So it spices up that area, makes it look a little bit more interesting by adding more detail. The glaze medium makes the green transparent without just thinning it uh, like adding water would. So we have a bit more control with the glaze medium and that allows us to do uh, dots that are going to stay where we put them uh, as opposed to if we just used water it'd be a bit too runny to get this detail. On to the shell 
And like always, when you're painting something that you want to look realistic, I did do some research. I looked at a lot of various tortoise shells, and you have a wide variety of ways you could paint a tortoise shell. Just search for them, and believe me, there's a ton of ways. And I just picked one that I thought looked best, and we're going to go with that. It's rare, but on occasion you may need to make a light colored wash uh, and put that over a darker surface like we're doing here to get the detail in the little shell section recesses. We have bone white that's thinned and to do this we just have to apply multiple coats. So if you're doing a white wash over a black surface for some reason, do it in multiple coats. It may take three, may take four, just let the first one dry and then reapply. And then once that's dry, we can go back and do a little bit of final cleanup around the edges so we get a nice crisp line on each segment using some charred brown. I want to take a quick moment and talk about painting military miniatures. I'm guessing a lot of you out there buying Hero Forge are more into the fantasy or the sci-fi, but just a little FYI, when it comes to fantasy and sci-fi, you can virtually paint things any color that you want, even if there's recommendations in a rule book somewhere. That's just a recommendation. You can still paint your ultramarines red or what have you. Now, you may get a little bit of a funny looks if you paint your blue dragon green, but for the most part you can paint whatever you want. However, when it comes to military figures, part of it is the history, and you want to do your best to replicate the proper colors. And I'm kind of doing that here since this is a giant turtle. I am being a little bit more liberal with my color choices here, but I am trying to paint him as a mid-war American.
when it comes to painting guns, this is one one type of metal that you usually don't want to do metallics on. You can do a really dark metallic, but uh, of course you definitely should not be using uh, bright silver or steel metallics, especially on military weapons because uh, they have a blackened steel look to them. So you can actually get away uh, much more effectively with just using non-metallic paint and keeping it very dark. The last thing we're going to do is add a dark line around several areas of the miniature. This is going to help those areas to pop, to stand out a little bit more, which is important on a figure like this because of all the rips and tears in the pants and the jacket and even the shirt. We want those to stand out, so uh, putting a defining line around all of them uh, really makes them pop. And there we go, there is our Sergeant Turtle. He actually needs a name. I don't have a name for him. Sergeant Shell, maybe you could come up with a name. As I said before, not a whole lot of new information in this video. We are just using all the skills that I taught you in the previous videos. So we did a lot of layering. Uh, there's a little bit of selecting the proper highlight color. Hopefully you got out of this and seeing where you can add details to the model where you can, the spots on the back of the neck, the chevrons on the shoulder, or uh, little things like that, having the transition color around the uh, underbelly. So all things like that, but again, this is a lot of just practice and learning layering and figuring out what colors work best with others. So hope you enjoy this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.